Hey guys, Steve Watts, Beeman Toyota here. Um, I had a couple questions about this, so uh, I, and I used to help people with this one uh, before I was ever selling cars. So uh, what I wanted to show you here um, is this, this is going to be a uh, it's a 2019 Corolla. Um, that is not really important to what I'm uh, what I'm showing you here. Um, but what I wanted to show you is what do you look for when you're buying a used car? So whether you're buying it from a dealership, whether you're buying it from uh, an individual, um, there's certain things you want to double check that could be important to uh, uh, obviously how long the car is going to last you and, and even more importantly, how much you pay for the car. So um, there are different ways that you can save a little bit of money when you're uh, kind of negotiating on the price when you're uh, talking, especially to a uh, an individual. So now chances are a dealership has gone over the car um, and, and they would probably know if there was any issues and, and most of the reputable ones, we would uh, disclose that to you. If there'd been damage on a Carfax or things like that. So, um, or, or if we just noticed something, we would more likely than not disclose that to you just uh, for most dealerships. I know Beeman would, but uh, I, I'm, Gonna, gonna leave a little bit of room there for for some dealerships that are less than honorable but most dealerships especially those that have been around a while are going to disclose if there's any issues with the car so um this is kind of for you and for your uh for your own peace of mind for looking at a car to be able to know uh some things that you can check to be sure that it, at least you're doing your due, dil due diligence to make sure that uh the car is at least a good one and maybe finding a way to save just a little bit of money on the car. So um, I'm going to show you this one here. So what I want to show you first is one of the easiest things you can do is check your lines. These lines should be fairly uniform. Um, now, some manufacturers aren't as precise as Toyota when they build them, so they could be a little bit off. But you shouldn't see a, a side on this side where it's like that and then a side on this side where you can you know put your finger all the way down in it they should be about equal on either side and then how your headlights sit you always want to look at how your headlights sit one of the reasons that i am uh, focusing on the front end for this is because the front end is more likely than not one of the main spots that's going to have damage if it's ever been in an accident so um, that's one of the things that i'm showing you here we can go over mechanical here in a little bit but i'm going to go over um, how you can tell if a car has been in a wreck so um, if you can tell that a car has been in a wreck then you can actually save yourself a lot of money if you're okay with buying it there, there's some cars that have been in a wreck and if they've been fixed they're fine uh, don't get me wrong there there's you know if it's been in a wreck or if it's had damage to it there, there's no no issues with that and i will say this too um while i'm thinking about it always pull the carfax carfax is going to tell on a car but realize that a carfax is not a hundred percent carfax will only tell you what's been reported on that car so um if somebody fixed it themselves it's not going to show that so um but just kind of looking you always look down here watch for different colors paints um now if uh you're a colored car it's a lot easier to see something like a red or something like that than what it would look like even on a black or a white car. Um, that's my opinion. I just find it a little bit easier, but I always grab down here, give you a little pull on here. See if you can get that bumper to pop out. Um, if that bumper pops out, it probably means those clips have been popped. Now that's more of a way to help you save some money because chances are if somebody's bumped somebody, you can have those clips pop out if somebody's bumped somebody, but not really had that big of a wreck. So you can always have a, uh, um, you can always have that happen. So um, always look at your lights here. These lights on, on most cars now, they're, they're a, um, kind of more of a plastic. So over time, especially if they're drove a lot and you've got a couple hundred thousand miles on them, something like that, these lights will get fogged up. Now they're pretty cheap to be able to change them. I mean, I had a, an old Corolla, it was a 99 Corolla, and I bought a pair of them on eBay for, I think it was $150 for a pair. And I think it took me about 30 minutes to put them in, uh, maybe just a little bit longer than that, but somewhere 30 minutes to an hour to put them in on, on that car. And it changed the look and obviously the visibility of the headlights immensely. But like I said, I'm trying to help you save some money if you're looking at a car. If you got one that has those really fogged up lights, uh, I mean, dealer prices on those lights are pretty expensive. Like I said, you can find them cheap, but you know, you're, you're, you know, you could probably get $500 off a car that's got really bad headlights just by pointing it out to somebody. Um, now they might've taken that into account when they price the car and tell you that as well, but just kind of let you know, but always check, you know, make sure all these panels line up, 
Make sure your doors line up. Watch for your doors being really, really close. If your doors are really close, chances are this fender has been pushed back. If it's really, really close, and then watch how your door opens. Your door should open evenly as well. So when you're doing that, you should be able to open it. Always check your tires. Now here at Beeman, we change most tires on used cars just because it, it seems like they're mostly, uh, um, most of them will need it. Um, now you can't really get in here too well to see the brakes. But what I tell people a lot of times is get in here and try to rub the rotor. Um, the reason for that is that if you can rub the rotor, feel if there's ridges on the rotor. Um, if you have any ridges on your brake rotor, um, you're going to have to change your brakes. Now, your brakes might have been completely, you know, they might have just changed the brakes, but they changed them from a brake pad that was squealing real bad to a... Um, a brake pad that's uh, new but they didn't change the rotors because they're trying to get out cheap if that's the case you'll have ridges on those rotors and it's going to wear that brake pad down very very fast so um, you definitely want to know that i've also seen before where a company would change the brakes on one side and not on the other because maybe the caliper's uh, wearing on that side or it's holding or something like that so always look and see if they have a new caliper on one side or a, a new brake pad on one side or something like that um, and just realize that could could be indicative of an issue on the other side that maybe wasn't that bad yet, but it might be soon. So, um, so definitely showing you that. Um, if your rears have uh, rotors, then definitely uh, check that too. If they have drums, there's really not a lot you can do on that. Um, the main way I'll do that is I'll actually pull up your um, your emergency brake. So if you have an emergency brake on the floor, or emergency brake that's uh, on uh, the hand crank, pull that up. See how far that goes. Because if that goes pretty far, then uh, you'd know that your rear brakes, which is normally what's held with your parking brake, um, and there are some that, and, and I've been a mechanic for a while, so I can tell you this too, there are some that have disc brakes on the back, but they have a rear drum that's actually your parking brake. So there's different things that you can have, but I'm just trying to give you a way that while you're looking at a car, you can find a glaring issue. So um, like I said, if you can pull up that parking brake and it comes all the way up and there's you know, or very little resistance to that parking brake, it probably means that uh, at least the parking brake's bad, if not your rear brakes are bad or about to be uh, replaced. Definitely use that to help save yourself some money as well. Um, I always check your back. These are going to be a little bit closer usually just because how they put the backs on here. Um, but check your, your gaps again. Always look at your gaps. If, if you're okay with a bigger gap or something that's been a little bit tweaked, you can definitely uh, buy that. Uh, if you're not, then that's something you should watch out too. So, um, but always, always watch and, and look for like lights or things hanging. Check for like backup cameras. Look for the fascia on the back. Look for the fascia on the front. Um, you can always see if something's been taken care of too, even if it's been um, kind of like redone and, and uh, um, you know, just if it's if it's uh, had something done to it, right? So you can still tell if uh, somebody's kind of taken care of it. Check your wheel wells, your inner wheel wells. Make sure that you still have this inner wheel well. Um, sometimes if you've blown a tire or been in a wreck, people will actually leave those out, um, which is not a good thing, but uh, it's all about fixing it cheap, fixing it fast, and uh, trying to get to uh, the next level. I mean, you, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm trying to show you stuff you couldn't see because uh, even if, uh, you know, you're the most novice person, if somebody's duct taped something on, you can tell. So I'm just kind of going over stuff that doesn't, uh, that, that isn't glaring when it comes to looking at a vehicle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to prop this open here. Sorry for holding my phone the way I am, but... Uh, all right, so now obviously this car has been cleaned up. Um, this is on our used car lot, of course. So, um, but what I'm gonna show you here is always look at your battery, see if there's any corrosion from the battery. This one's a brand new battery. So uh, chances are we tested it and it didn't pass our standards, so we replaced it. Um, if you look on the side of a battery, and I'll see if this one's got it. Um, I don't see it on here, but if you look on the side of the battery, you might see something that says the date. Um, so it might say like 10 to 16 or, or something like that. If you see 10, 16, it means it was produced in October of 2016. It doesn't necessarily mean that it went into, um, it went into service at that time. They might've not put the car or put it in a car until 2018, but that's when the battery was made. So the younger you can find on a battery, the better. So if you find one and you're looking at it and it says, you know, you know, 10 of 10, well, chances are, you know, most of your batteries, they're probably going to last you five to seven years. Uh, 
for the most part, some of them last a little longer, some of them last a little less. So uh, don't don't write me comments on that. I realize that uh, batteries are in exact science, different sizes, different things like that will uh, um, definitely change. So um, realize that uh, they they don't last forever. So if you've got a 2010 battery in there or a 2012 battery in there, or you know something that's five, six, you know seven years old, you, you might want to negotiate either for a discount on the vehicle for a couple hundred bucks for changing the battery, or have them put in a new battery for you. So depending on who you're dealing with, that you know you can usually get that done to where they'll throw in a new battery even if it tested good, just to make your deal. So always uh, definitely look at that and see what you can do there. So um, something else I always show people is watch for bolts missing things like that watch for things missing up top whenever you're talking about uh things that are in here watch for something like this that's bent some you know pieces that get held where if, if this had ever been wrecked this could have been bent somebody could have bent it back so it'd be wavy so you know look for things like that look for missing pop clips um, things along those lines. Sometimes people don't have those, so they just kind of leave them out there, or maybe they'll throw a screw in, and you can tell that a, a screw's where it shouldn't be. So always watch for that. Look down and kind of look in there. Make sure that, like, you can see this little plastic piece. If you look all the way down there, little plastic piece is on the bottom there. Watch for shrouds. Anything that is plastic that could have broken in a wreck. Um, I'm just kind of looking down here with my phone. I don't know what I'm showing you, but just kind of looking. But anything that's plastic that could have been um, broken in a wreck, you can kind of see down. If you look straight down, you'll see there's a little shroud there. It covers your oil pan and that. People tend to discard those when they're trying to rebuild the car cheaply. So um, if you don't see one of those or something like that, or if you look and you can tell that it's got a brand new radiator in it or something along those lines, once again, this car doesn't have any of that. But if you saw that, you would definitely want to know. Also, look really close at your screws. If a screw has had a wrench on it, it will put a black mark on the side. Even if it's like a black car, you can still look really close and see that a screw or a bolt has had one on there. Always check your hood, especially because they were made, if they're change, uh, pulling an engine out or something like that, or trying to, you know, kind of rebuild the problem. A lot of times people take off the hood just because it's easier to work under the car. Um, but just, just watch for the hood or sometimes they'll replace the hood if it's men in a wreck, of course, but always look for that because if you paint your hood and you go and you put it back on, chances are people aren't touching up the paint on the uh, the bolts there um, after they put it on. So always watch for that kind of stuff. Watch for your seals, you know, things along those lines to make sure that they are in there. Um, always check your belt. I always tell people to do this too. So now we're into a little bit more of the mechanical. Um, check your belt. Check for, you know, original equipment. Keep in mind, if you're talking about a, a 200,000 mile car, which this one's not, of course, but um, if you were talking about a 200,000 mile car and you could tell um, because it had original markings on your alternator, chances are you probably need an alternator soon. Same thing with the starter, if you can see it, the starter's down here, but um, but uh, if, uh, like I said, if you, if you can see something, man, point it out. If it looks original, point it out. Um, if you see a, a crack or anything like that, point it out. Um, just because, you know, anything that we can use, you know, as a salesperson, anything I can take my manager and say, hey, look, I noticed this on this car. Now, we might not give you a discount for it, but we're probably going to fix it. I mean, and, and if we can't, then we're going to at least let you know why we priced the car that we, the way we priced it. Uh, maybe you noticed it was, you know, a thousand dollars less than the next closest car. Well, yeah, but it had that little issue with it, whatever that issue was. So that's why it was priced that way. We're at least going to let you know that. So, um, but definitely always look for your hoses, look for your belts, look for anything that's coming out, make sure it's all in its place, make sure it looks good. Um, you know, now chances are it won't look this nice if you're not buying it from a dealership, um, just because um, people don't tend to clean their engines. And those that really clean them tend to kind of do it wrong sometimes, just to just kind of say that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this inside here. Um, so now when you're looking, like I said, when you're trying to, to save money, that's one of the things I'm trying to help you do. Always look at your interior, make sure everything's shined up. Um, you can always look and make sure that, uh, you know, when you're looking on the inside that you haven't had, you know, seals being pulled off or uh, anything that's uh, that looks glaring there. Um, anything that smells like smoke, you always want to watch out for. Um, so, uh, and I can tell you this one probably used to be a rental car because it's got those little things on there. Um, they're not quite done with this one yet. Just waiting on detail. So, um, 
and so they're going to be pulling that off of course so um just kind of looking down you, you look around um now i will tell you and I've, I've already shut the hood but um when you start a car you should get under it and just i don't care if you don't really understand what you're looking for and i don't mean under get under the hood but i don't care if you don't know what you're looking at but um you always want to make sure that uh you get and and this is the other thing shut this off whenever it's it's going shut it off listen for squeaks listen for rattles try to feel any kind of shake um see if there's like a little shake that's going on or something like that a little shake rattle roll um and just feel that out when you're um trying you know when you're looking at your car of course so try to feel out and feel what your um what the car is doing see if it's giving you anything glaring any knocking tapping squeaking um anything like that is probably going to be from the engine um now it could be from the belt it could be a peripheral it could be you know something like that but if you're not moving it kind of helps you to figure that out so now um the other thing i want you to do is always test drive a used car um i've had people before say they all drive the same i don't need to test drive it you're wrong um so if you think that way i'm, I'm gonna feel very very happy to call you wrong um and here's the thing you drive that car it could have a wheel balance issue wheel balance issues are really really easy to fix but if you drive it down the road you get home and you know certain dealerships might say well pay for a wheel balance then it's your fault it's your problem you should have test drove the car just drive the car i mean it's not that hard but you're going to find out you know number one when you start driving the car make sure your steering wheel is straight let go of the steering wheel and see if you know like this one's got the wheels turned just a little bit i can obviously move this back but if you if you're driving like this and you let go of the steering wheel and it does this to where it starts to turn on you you know you got an alignment issue so why would you not bring that up you know so keep you know don't turn the radio on if you want to turn the radio on turn it on while you're sitting still do not have the radio running while you're on a test drive um, just because, oh, I, I want to see how it sounds. I understand you want to see how it sounds. You see how it sounds in the parking lot. Drive the car without having the radio on. It's going to tell on itself if there's any issues, if there's any little rattles in the back, if there's things like that. If they can't be explained, figure them out before you buy the car. Um, note them. Um, you know, if you note it when you buy the car, hey, it had a wobble or hey, it had a, a balance issue. And you get in there and they they go to fix the balance and find out it's not the tires it's the ball joints well you at least noted that when you bought the car so the fact that it's noted will usually give you some type of recourse so always try to make sure that you drove the car you feel the car you like the car um like i said i've gone for years with people before i ever started selling cars i've gone for years with people trying to find number one ways to save you money and number two ways to make sure that you don't get a car that's going to leave you stranded or that's not going to do what it should do as a vehicle so um so definitely you want to do that make sure this is something else that i always tell people to do make sure that the car has the equipment you have to have um, when i say that like this one's got bluetooth all right so if you say that bluetooth i have to have bluetooth don't go to a car that doesn't have it and say well i'm good with this one uh, just realize you're, you're not going to be that different you know if you go up a year in price because the next one's got bluetooth or maybe it's worth an extra thousand dollars to you because you're going to keep it forever so just just realize that if you do this the right way and you buy things the right way you're going to be fine so now next thing i'm going to show you is like like i said so do your test drive drive it be quiet don't let anybody talk to you you know answer if the salesman asks you a question ask answer the question real fast and just kind of let it be quiet um don't tell stories. Don't do things like that. Um, don't get me wrong. I'll, I'll BS with you with the best of them and we'll tell stories together if that's what you really want to do on a, on a test drive. But if you want to make sure that it's the best car for you and keep in mind on a new car, new cars, they, most of them drive the same. There's very, very few issues with new cars. Used cars have been used different. Used cars uh, have been serviced different, stuff like that. So on a used car, I think you need to pay more attention on a used car to make sure that you're getting what you want. So um, now the other thing I'm gonna show you is come down here and if you turn on your air conditioning. Now, here's the thing. If, if it's 90 degrees outside, you're probably turning it straight to cool and 
you're gonna let the thing run and go, yep, I got air conditioning, cool, we're lowering it down. You just forgot one of the most important things. You never turned it to heat. I realize you don't wanna turn it to heat, but at least before you get out of the car, so say you've been on your test drive and before you get out of your car, you need to turn it on to heat. Um, make sure that the heat works and vice versa. If you, you know, been running it, it's, you know, 20 degrees outside. I know you don't want to turn on the air conditioner, but you need to turn on the air conditioner and make sure that it works. Um, good way when it's cold is turn on the defroster because that's going to actually show you if it's able to pull the moisture out of the air, which is done by your air conditioning system. So um, you always want to make sure that you at least check your AC and you know move it you know get it up get it down if it's on auto function like this one's got make sure that it does what it's supposed to do um, and that you don't have to uh, uh, worry about it and when you've got different levels make sure you put different levels in there all right also make sure that when you get it up here smell your vents because here's the thing and I'll, and I'll tell people this too you can clear smoke out of a car um, it works very well to, to for some companies they can actually do very good job of getting smoke out of a car if you're smoke sensitive or smell sensitive perfume sensitive things like that it can actually reside in the vents so if you'd never turn on the vent you get to where you're turning on the vents when you get on your way home and now all of a sudden there's some type of a musty smell or something like that out of the vents you need to know about that before you ever buy the car uh, because those are very hard to clean so um, just something to say and then you know sometimes people don't change out cabin filters so you also you also want to make sure that your airflow through your vents you want to make sure your airflow through your vents is good as well so you always want to check that also check your windshield wipers make sure that you you know hit them make sure that it it goes on all if you've got a back windshield wiper do it go ahead and hit your your washers and figure out exactly that your windshield wipers work um different you know different cars could could have issues i had a uh friend of mine that had bought it was an older gmc it was a direction not gmc it was an older chevy and i think i don't want to say it was uh mid 80s maybe early 90s something like that and it had a recall on it because the wipers wouldn't work in the rain uh, they worked every other time but for some reason something with the circuit board wouldn't let them work in the rain so he had you know it had a recall on it so he had that fixed don't get me wrong but you always want to check as much as you can and realize that you're doing that um, that's something else too. go to safercar.gov um, check for recalls on any car that you're looking at um, a lot of times I like to put card the VIN number put it into a uh, uh, Google search see what you can find out um, it, it doesn't hurt to do that kind of thing so maybe you find that the car you're looking at ain't the right car for you well there's a lot of used cars out there um, and and maybe this is the one that you want maybe the you know you're okay that it had a wreck on it you just realize that you need to make sure it was fixed right you need to look at that closer also don't don't uh, you know hesitate to take it to somebody if you choose to uh, realize dealerships are most of us are really concerned about our, our image and our reputation. So we're gonna have our mechanics looked at it really good for you. Um, could something be missed? Sure, I mean, everybody's human, of course, but um, chances are dealership's gonna have gone over it and, and that now buy here, pay here. Man, get those things checked out. Uh, just just trust me, get those things checked out. Um, they, uh, and, and then some of your, your lesser um, places, any, any place without a service center, get that checked out because they didn't even look at it they probably didn't even change the oil um, that's the other thing i didn't show you under the hood pull the dipstick look at the oil um, if it has a transmission dipstick pull that and smell it um, your transmission should look cherry red for your transmission oil and it should not smell burnt it'll smell sweet um, and that's the easiest way i could try to describe it, it smells more like sweet it's a hydraulic fluid but um it's it should be like a cherry red should not be brown and should not smell burnt if it smells burnt you probably have a transmission um, issue that could be coming up i'm going to say every time because it's not every time and i don't want those comments but um i'm and you know like i said i'm just trying to help you guys to know what to look for i'm sure that some people will probably disagree with certain things that i have to say it, it's one opinion I know it's one opinion and I'm just like I said if you do a couple of these things maybe you can save yourself some money maybe save yourself some time maybe you save yourself some heartache um, by not being able to have a car because it's always in the shop 
Um, you know, and then always I tell people look at reliability. So look up the car that you're looking to buy. Chances are Consumer Reports, JD Power, you know, some of those, they probably put out reliability on those particular cars that year. So if you're looking for a 2012 Camry, look it up. See what Consumer Reports said about the reliability for the year 2012. It's on Google. You can find it. Um, so always look at you know what the top reliable ones are. Look for um, you know gas mileage. Realize that gas mileage on a used car is probably not going to be the same that it was when it was new. Um, now if it's got 10,000 miles on it and it's a year old, yeah, you're probably about there. But if you've got 150,000 miles on a, a you know a Chevy Cavalier and you just bought it, you're not getting the same fuel economy that it got when it's new. It's just not going to happen. Um, as they wear out, as they, they drive, they're going to lose some of that fuel economy. So um, you always want to know that you're not going to have as much fuel economy um, if you have a higher mileage vehicle. Um, and then also look for the book and see what you've got to do for your maintenance coming up. And I'm just showing you this car a little bit here, but um, always look for what you have coming up in the maintenance because certain things, especially luxury cars, um, something like BMWs, stuff like that, they've got certain procedures that need to be done at certain times and they are expensive. Um, so you find, especially if you find something that's at a really great deal, you might find out that you need to have a $10,000 service done to that car because of where it's at in the mileage or it's just not going to run right for you and that's why somebody gave you a four or five thousand dollar discount on the car because you weren't uh you, you didn't know what was coming up on that car so always protect yourself as best you can put everything in writing if somebody promises you something realize it ain't a promise unless it's in writing um, somebody can tell you all day long what they're going to do. Make sure they put it in writing. Make sure they take care of you. Make sure that they do the right things to take care of you and you do the right things to protect yourself. Um, not saying that uh, everybody in the car industry is uh, is shady, but because most of us and most dealerships are not. Um, so I did want to tell you that. I mean, there's, there's not a lot of those old-time used car uh, people that... Uh, you know, or second hated next to Congress. There's just not that many out there. So what I try to tell people is realize you can find a good person. You can choose your salesperson when you come to a dealership, especially. Um, don't just settle for somebody that's standing out front. Chances are they're, you know, they don't have a book of business because they either haven't done it long enough or they haven't taken care of enough people to uh, have repeat customers or realistically maybe they haven't uh, made the best impression on people so I always tell people pick your salesman um, I mean if you're going to a dealership walk into the dealership walk around tell them you're there for service everybody's gonna let you walk right past them um, walk around look for somebody that, that looks like you want to work with them and just walk up just say hey are you busy are you a salesman uh, I had people do that all the time and I, I actually really like that so um, you know hey can you help me yeah I'm, I'm more than happy to help you if I can't I'll find you somebody that's going to treat you right, and they're going to help you. So um, definitely just, just realize that. There's there's a few things that you can do. I know I've made this video long. I'm not trying to uh, um, lengthen it anyway here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of hope that I've showed you at least enough on the car. Um, I will mention, too, when you're looking at seats, stuff like that, always look for stains and stuff. Um, that, realistically, they can come out pretty easy, but could help you save some money. So... Um, but watch for that. Also look on your headliner, watch for stains, watch for, like if you get up here, a lot of times ladies with the uh, long nails will have scratched this headliner. You can have a lot of scratches up here. Um, headliners are pretty cheap to actually replace. They're not that expensive, but man, you can get some good discounts off of having scrap, you know, scratched up headliners and where it looks like a dog just clawed them and you know, or, you know, maybe a dog did claw, maybe it's in the back seat, something like that, but you can get good discounts for stuff like that. So, um, but once again, Steve Welch, um, Beeman Toyota in downtown Nashville. I hope this video has helped you guys um, to know what to look for on a used car to at least kind of protect yourself and, uh, you know, to, to kind of uh, be able to do some things. By the way, what I was talking about with the, uh, the brake, if you pull the brake up, 
just kind of pull it up with your with your hand there and you can kind of see where it stops you'll know where your brake is give it an extra little tug you see i got some room there so that's what you want to do to make sure that you've got you know some room on your back brake pads i did want to mention that here while i was in here as well um something else too i'm going to do one other thing sorry about that put it in reverse make sure your backup camera works make sure your door locks work if it, if it's supposed to do that um neutral put it in drive make sure that you know there's no clunks you know no clanks anything like that when you're shifting beyond gears make sure that it's not um you know making any noises any rattles any dings uh you know like uh, i know ding is a bad word but uh to use for it but like a you know like a metal to metal like a, a bell sound something like that um make sure that you don't have any of those things that are happening um make sure that you don't hear the engine really bogged down or something along those lines but um that's something else to do with your transmission so like i said steve watch beam and toyota i hope i've helped you guys out here um definitely reach out to me here at the dealership new used car whatever you're looking for i can help you out um but definitely appreciate you guys like subscribe hopefully i've helped you have a great day we'll talk to you guys soon